Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Before I start the show, I just want to sh- clue you in on something I'm celebrating today. It's really good news. If you've been a longtime listener of mine, you know that I've battled with my weight and eating all my life, but especially in the last seven and a half years since my dad died. So I actually think I've found a miracle and I started just eating this food plan that I read in a book 20 days ago and I have lost 11 and a half pounds. And the premise behind it is about how our brain works with certain foods that we may be addicted to. And uh, it's mind blowing for me. You don't have to buy any lotions or potions or pills. But if it's something that you know of somebody else who might be looking for some inspiration and uh, something that works, you can find you can go to brightlineeatingplan.com brightlineeatingplan.com. So enough about that. This is not a weight loss show. This is about life after death and inspiring you to have a great life. Our guest today is Christine Salter a psychic and evidential medium, spiritual teacher, and healer who works in the loving service of the divine. Christine developed her own natural intuitive gifts as an adult after being immersed in a holistic healing school and has devoted her life to a spiritual path helping others. She is so passionate about supporting bereaved parents, helping them to connect with their children in spirit, by teaching them how to open their own spiritual gifts of spirit communication. Actually, this is something we can all use, which I'm excited to hear about. Christine's soul's mission is to help people reclaim their inner light that was dimmed by the passing of a loved one. You can find her on our website, which is christinesalter.com, where she is on Facebook, which you go to facebook.com forward slash salterhealing.com. Christine Salter, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Oh, thank you so much, Sandra. I'm just so excited to share and um, experience you also as the host, because I know that there's so much that you also understand about life after life. Life after life but helping people who are grieving. And I'm so interested to hear about how you teach people. So if, let's, where shall we get started, my <laughs> dear? You're coming to us from, where are you, Arizona? Uh, I'm in, yeah, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. Okay, great. And I, I like to share uh, how, how I got to be a spiritual teacher yes. and an evidentiary medium. Perfect. Um, because everybody, everybody has their own path to their connection with source, basically. And we're all connected, but we don't necessarily realize that we're some of us are still snoozing. So um, I uh, found a, so let me just back up one second. So I didn't have a religious background growing up. And I believe that all of our souls choose, you know, where we're going to end up in the families and all that. So my soul picked uh, a family that didn't have a uh, any kind of religious background, which works out really well for me, because I don't have all those other things to fight in, in my spiritual journey and awakening. Right. And so when I was about 10, one day I walked in the living room and I found the book series uh, Mysteries of the Unknown on TV and it stopped me in my tracks and it was about uh, the afterlife and ancient Egypt and ghosts and all these different things and I just was like frozen transfixed like oh my god I've got to know these mysteries of the unknown like I was moth to a flame and I laughed because these books would come in every month and I would just devour them and just read and and get all the information that I could and I was 12 trying to astral project you know nobody's showing me how to do it just that's great uh yeah and so through my experiences um I like to tell people that I didn't I wasn't always psychic And I think that's important because a lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, you're a professional psychic, you've been this way forever, and that's just not the case. And it's important to know because anybody can open up at any time, and you don't have to be special uh, to have the ability to connect with spirit. And I think, to me, that's just a really important piece. And so time goes on, and I want to share um, two experiences um, with spirit. So I'm a normal kid. Uh, I grew up in a household where my dad was an alcoholic. And so we had a lot of difficulties for me growing up. And what I've learned over time is people who grow up with a lot of trauma in their childhood tend to be very psychic because you have to learn to read people's energies and um, to know, you know, are you safe or, or whatever, just to um, understand your environment better. Mm-hmm. But when I was uh, 19, uh, we had to put the family dog down. 
and she was like 15 years old. It was really my first death that I had to experience. And so we were at the vet and I was with my parents and we're all, you know, sobbing and crying. And it was just horrible having to put her down, though she was, you know, at a point with suffering. When we were done, we went and got in the car and I got in the back seat and I never had any kind of experiences except for being totally open to it since I was like 10 years old. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw our dog get in the car with us. And I said to my parents, I was like, um, I think Sugar just <laughs> got in the car with us. And she looked younger. Um, she was, of course, you know, very spry and healthy because she was very old when she passed. Yeah. And she rode in the car on the way home with us. And I just thought, isn't that interesting? Like, it didn't trigger anything in me. It was just like, hmm, her soul just got in the car and here she is. And she's perfectly fine. Yet, we just left this big emotional mess, you know, sure. at the vet. And... So I just, I kept that with me and I just, I tried to keep an open mind to the spirit world. And, um, when I was, so let me think when I was 24, I went to uh, massage school. And so that's where I, so I've been a healer long before I was a medium mm -hmm. and spirit brought that path to me also. So one of the ways the spirit works with us is of course through signs. And I'm sure a lot of people understand that, but um, they gave us these little breadcrumbs of things that come to us and inspiration. So I found um, a massage school, healing school here in, uh, it was in Scottsdale at the time and, and got my training. And that's what really started to open me up on my journey. My teacher said that I looked like I'd always been doing it from day one. And it always felt natural. And um, I had an experience with energy. So we had to take some energy classes. And uh, in one class, it was kind of a darkened room, because that's how you can see energy better when it's like kind of a lightly lit room. And I saw energy coming out of my instructor's hands as he was putting his hands down on somebody. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> that's so cool. Sure. It, there was a blue um, beam of light coming from the palms of his hands. And I didn't know anything about chakras or really energy healing or anything or that you had energy that comes from the middle of your palms. And I said out loud in class, I was like, I can see it. And he's like, see what? I said, I see the energy like with my physical eyes coming out of the palms of your hands. And he didn't really know what to do with that. And so he just says, oh, OK, and went about what he was doing. And I was like, you're not going to shut me. I'm not shutting down like I'm not going to doubt myself and what I saw. And so um, that continued on. And I found the angels. So I graduated school and I found the angels in 2004. And I had still been open. I'd had a deck of Oracle cards like I've continuing on my journey, gathering my tools. Yes. And, and I hadn't really known how to talk to spirit yet or anything. And so I found a book on angels, I was guided, of course, learning, you know, learning how to talk to the angels, and uh, got a book, I was given a deck of Oracle cards. And so I started using those and starting to read some books um, on how to channel. And so I had one really big thing that kind of got me going down that path. And one day, gosh, I can't even tell you what year it was anymore, 1999, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And I had a male spirit following me and I could just feel it and I knew it. I couldn't see, um, but I just somehow knew I can talk to them and I was going to figure this out. So this is kind of a really funny story. So I was married at the time and I told my husband, I said, I have this male spirit here and he was totally open. I said, and I want to figure out how to talk to him. And he says, oh, well, I have a book on channel laid out on the bookshelf. And I was just dumbfounded. I'm like, what? <laughs> I've never yeah. seen that book before. What are you talking about? And, and so I went and I got the book and I sat down and I was determined, like, all right, I'm going to figure this out. I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm going to figure out what this person wants to say to me. So I start reading this book. And within the first ooh, four or five pages, maybe, it's talking about needing to connect with a guide. Uh, to assist you in your communicating with spirit. So kind of, I call my, my supervisors. I work with Archangel Michael. He's my, he's my main dude. And so if you were just wanting, so the book says, if you aren't willing to call in a high level guide for yourself um, to do this process, and you're just wanting to talk to just any spirit that's around, you are not ready yet. Put the book down and come back to it another time. And I thought, God, that's really weird because I don't care about the guide. <laughs> I just want to know what this dude wants to say to me, right? That, right. that was my, my thinking. And so I put the book down. I was like, well, okay, well, I guess I'm not ready yet. Okay, whatever. I never picked the book up again. And four years later, 
I had already learned how to use oracle cards and I was giving readings with the angels. Uh, a friend of mine said, I want to learn how to channel. And I said, I have this book for you. And I told her the story and how I'd never finished it or anything. And she took the book home. Well, she came back two weeks later and I said, well, how, what'd you think? How was the book? She said, the book was great, Christine, but those words aren't in the book. What words? That if you're not, if oh. you're not, <laughs> yeah. So the words were, if you just wanted to talk to any old spirit, basically, um, and not a guide that you need to put the book down, you're not ready. Those words are not in that book. But oh, I read those words crazy. because my guides knew like, okay, Christine, you think you're ready, but you, you must connect with a guide. If you're not willing, we know you're not ready yet. And so I took that book from her and I read it end to end. And they are not in there. And what it really taught me, though, is that my guides are looking out for me and they know my path and they know my plan and they know how I work. So just like everybody's guides know how you work and they will bring messages to you. They'll bring things to you in a way that you'll respond to it. Like I kind of like rules. And so they knew that. So <laughs> do you remember the name of the book? Uh, yeah, it's called Opening to Channel by Sinea Roman. OK. Mm hmm. And uh, I, I since have spent a lot of time with they have a bunch of wonderful meditations. She channeled the book. Uh, her spirit guide is Orin. And um, they have a great past life meditation that I've used really to help clear me. So I could be a really clear channel here on the planet. And so I've done a, a ton of healing work on myself using past life regressive work. Um, so I'm always recommending it. Um, wow. So yeah, so, where do we go from here? This is exciting. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. So how do I get to where I'm sitting now? So uh, I was really floored and it taught me a lot um, about, you know, how my guides are working with me. And um, I had so a massage therapist and starting to give readings. I combine the two. So I'm helping people with body work and um, releasing the emotions in their physical body and Okay, yeah, hold on. So Michael's talking to me. I'm like, oh, I'll share that story because that one is really funny. But let me I'll come back to those two. Um, <laughs> this is my life. I'll be talking and all of a sudden I stop because, you know, I'm being told like, oh, er, you know, like re rerouting, um, which just cracks me up. Because if you talk to me in person, you'll notice that happens a lot because I feel like I'm channeling most of the time. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm in for wherever you want to go. So yeah, yeah. So let me grab let me grab that thought again. Oh, about the mediumship. And so mediumship is the last thing that came to me. And it's something that I was uncomfortable with. And I really kind of resisted it. And because the ego, so the ego or the lower self will would say to me, well, if you're wrong, they're gonna know if you give an angel message, they won't know if you're wrong. And so the people pleaser part of me was like, Oh, I don't know, that's kind of that's kind of scary, you know, and it, it has so much weight to it to me as far as I'm concerned, because there's so much healing that can take place yes. in a medium reading. And so I hold it in such high, high integrity, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it can make or break somebody. And I think that it's so important to really just come from a place of love and a place of service and ask, you know, to do the best for somebody. So in my in my path to be a medium, um, they got me comfortable with all the other things. But this one lady one time, she came in and I was working at a, um, not at my own office, but I was working for um, a massage place. And it's always random, so we think, right? But there's really no coincidences. It's all synchronicities and serendipity right. and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I came out, I was ready for my next client and I brought a lady back and I, I wasn't a public medium by any stretch. And it just, it took me forever to really, I felt like I had to put my neck out on the line like it was gonna be chopped off. Like, okay, let's do this. And what I found is, no, that's not the case at all. There's a lot of people that are really open to it. But anyway, I had this lady come in and I feel her dad. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But this isn't my business. So I'm gonna have to be really cautious about how do I approach this? You know, I don't want to get in trouble. And so I told the lady, I said, you know, I'm really intuitive. I said, I, uh, I feel like you have a male with you. And she really perked up. Well, it turns out um, that she wasn't going to come in for her appointment. And her daughter called her and said, you get up off your butt because she had been on the couch for like two weeks, depressed, her dad had been gone for five years. And 
her daughter insisted, no, you go in and you go take care of yourself. You go get a massage. Little did she know what she was walking into. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I tell her, you know, I, I can connect with loved ones in spirit. And she proceeds to tell me she had been looking for three years to find somebody to bring through her dad. But she just was so confused as to what to look for that she had never found somebody. And so I said, well, you know, are you open to hearing messages? Well, this lady who couldn't get off the couch for two weeks is on the table and I'm giving her a massage and I'm bringing in her dad and bringing through this great information that she understands that it's her dad. And within 20 minutes, I notice that she's laughing. And by the time I'm done, you know, she had cried and released and all this stuff. And by the time I was done, she said that she felt 95% better. Terrific. And I was so floored at how healing it was for somebody to receive messages who really were in that dark, heavy space um, to know that their loved ones are still with them and that they are, you know, able to connect with them and they're, you know, they're okay and they know that you love them. Those are always the main questions that people really, they need that to find peace. But it really propelled me further into exploring mediumship and really helping people heal with it. So to me, mediumship is, is a healing modality because it, it transforms people. And I think that it's, it's sacred to me. Mediumship is sacred. So it, it is. And I'm assuming you were able to bring forth specifics to her that nobody mm -hmm. else could know that we're, you know, that it's, I think there's a lot of misconception about mediums um, that sometimes people say things that are vague that can apply to everyone. Or she told you that her dad was gone and, and things, but I wouldn't doubt that you give some pretty specific <laughs> evidence. Am I correct? Yeah, her, oh, absolutely. Like she, when she came in, she didn't mention anything about being sad or being depressed. I could just feel it because I was already mm -hmm. open. And so um, there was no, there's no indication that her dad had died. And I just said, you know, you have this meal with you. But yeah, her dad loved to fish. Mm -hmm. And so he shows me like with a rod and a reel. So it comes to me, I'm very clairvoyant. So I get a lot of pictures in mm -hmm. my head. I get it all, but it's, it's helpful for me to get pictures so I can describe what I see. And so yeah, absolutely is able to bring in, um, is, you know, evidentiary medium. Um, specific information where she could completely connect, um, including like personality. So what is her personality like and what do they look like? Those are the kind of things that I bring forward. Um, generally, I can get, you know, how they passed. I may feel it in my physical body or I might hear the word or uh, it all depends on how well the loved one has figured out to you know, send energy because it, you're seeking the language of energy, thoughts, feelings, words, sometimes tastes, stuff like that. So, yeah, so she definitely knew and she could feel him. So as I started working with her, <coughs> pardon me, as I started working with her, her awareness raised and she was able to feel him in the room too. So she was able to take that home with her and really just have that peace because everybody wants to know, is my loved one okay? And right. I would say 99% of the time, you know, there's, there may be some, and it's, it's so rare as far as I'm concerned, or at least in my career, that somebody wouldn't be at peace. And that might be if it's just very, very recently passed or if it was some very traumatic passing. Um, they have the ability to say, no, I'm not going to make my transition. But it's rare. It, it's very rare. And so I really hope that, you know, whoever is listening and if they wonder, gosh, I wonder if my loved one's OK, I would give you an enthusiastic double thumbs up <laughs> because they this isn't their first time here. Generally, they know the ropes. They know what it's like to, to come here and go back. And they really they're fine. It's us who they're concerned about far more than we would have any reason to be concerned for them. Mm, that I understand. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember mm -hmm. when you first started dabbling in mediumship when you were accurate with what came into your mind's eye? <laughs> Yeah, so that, that was one of the stories Archangel Michael was like, and come back. So I want to share two things. So my very first experience with mediumship was long before I ever even knew how to open my gifts or anything. And it was my own grandfather. <clears throat> and he'd been gone, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> about five years. And I was driving in my car, which is a kind of a good, med you need to pay attention, but it's kind of a good meditative space. And all of a sudden, I had the idea that my grandfather was riding in the car with me. 
And though I was already open to it, it wasn't weird. I was like, huh, my grandpa's here. Isn't that interesting? And a thought came into my head and he asked me, because it was right before Valentine's Day and he died the day before Valentine's Day. He said to me, just as clear as day, please bring grandma some flowers. So my grandma was still here. They'd been married 54 years. And my immediate response back was, she's going to think I'm nuts. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to show up at her house with flowers from you and you've been gone for five years? Right. And just as fast as I had that thought, another one came in and he said, I'm asking you to do it because I can't. And I was oh. like, well, you got me there, don't you? I'm the one in the human suit and you are you can't go to the store and get flowers. And so I was like, okay, I don't know how she's going to take this. This is a little weird. Um, and so I went to the store. They just happened to be on sale. And their thing was yellow flowers because my grandfather was from Texas. And so I thought, well, if, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to get a card too. Like, it's just we'll just do it real big if grandma thinks I'm nuts or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I went to her house and it was early in the morning. And uh, I showed up with, you know, a dozen long stem yellow roses for her and a card. And she invited me in and we sat down at the table and I told her the story. You know, grandpa was with me and he asked me to do this. And she never said a lot about it. And like, you know, we just kind of went on, I had to go home or whatever. And about five years later, she says, do you remember when you brought those flowers from grandpa? And I thought, how could I forget? She said, yes, of course. She said, that's the closest I'd felt to him since he had died. Thank you for doing that. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. And so it just touched my heart. You know, you don't until you work in this field and you work with spirit all the time, we don't really know how things affect other people. And so it's, it's a gift as far as I'm concerned in yes. regards to trusting, trusting the process. Um, but I want to share this funny story. <clears throat> when I teach mediumship, I always talk about it because when it comes to connecting with spirit, you have to learn to just say whatever comes in within reason. So I'm always my rules with spirit, you know, it has to be helpful. It has to be healing. Uh, I want information that <clears throat> only the person would know. Um, and so I went to, I did training with Doreen Virtue back in 2006. Uh -huh. And when I got home, I was thanking spirit because it's like, oh, great. Now I know how to use these gifts. And I've been a massage therapist for three years. And so I, I really want to do this also. And so I was on a call list for one of the local centers as a psychic and I get a phone call. They said, we have somebody who called and can you come down today? Well, just so happens that I was available. And so I'm driving down there, made the appointment with a lady and I'm just praising spirit. Oh, thank you, Angel, so much. I'm so excited. My first official psychic reading and this is great. And this better not be mediumship because when I did my training class, I struggled with it. So I was like, oh, well, I can't do that. So I get down, take the lady back to a little room and said, how can I help you? And she says, I want to talk to my mom. And I was like, oh, God. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like, I can't do that. What are you talking about? And I took a breath and I thought, OK, the angels aren't going to bring me something I can't do. So we'll just try it. Right. What's what's the worst? I could be wrong and whatever. Uh -huh. So I sit down and my process is always I just ask the person in your head, ask who you want to talk to the most. And then I feel into the energy and I describe, are they male? Are they female? What do they look like? And what's their personality temperament? So they can recognize, absolutely, that's my loved one. And um, so I did that. And her mom came right in. And her mom was this little fiery spirit who didn't um, mince words. And she was very, very blunt. And that's not me. Um, and so it was really interesting in having somebody like this come through. And but so the spirit always does this to me when I resist something they like throw extra heaping stuff on top of pressure to pressure me like, no, we're going to show you, you can do this. So this woman happened to be so very first psychic reading. Don't want to do mediumship. Now I'm doing mediumship. This woman was a professional psychic in her life and she had her own shop in las vegas <laughs> and i was like of course no pressure there oh great great so anyway so i bring in mom and you know she's talking about different things and um the daughter so mom took care of her father when she died the daughter took over care of grandfather <clears throat> and she was asking she's like you know can you ask her about my grandpa she was like, yeah, I'd kind of like to go to school. And I understood what she was asking me to ask her. And I hear clear in my head, like the woman just 
could have been standing next to me and I hear, don't worry about the old poop. He'll be dead soon anyway. Oh and gosh. I was horrified. Like, what kind of message is that? I'm not giving that message. That's a horrible message. And then it occurred to me, they're like, you know, you do make sure you know who you're talking to. And she is really blunt. And so I thought, oh, gosh, I don't like that. I said, I have a message. I'm, I don't really like it. I'm not comfortable. So I thought, I'm just going to test it. I said, would she call him an old poop? Oh, yeah. He had oh, an old poop hat and an old poop shirt. And I was like, oh, no. That's great. So, <laughs> well, what a, what a message to give, right? And so uh, I told her exactly. I said, I'll tell you exactly as I heard it. Um, you do what you're going to do with it. But and then I repeated it to her. Don't worry about the old poop. He'll be dead soon anyway. And energetically, it's like I had gotten up and punched her in the chest. She was like, <gasps> like, oh, my gosh. And so in connecting with mom, you know, the feeling that I really got from it was like, it's OK to live your life. You don't put yourself on hold. And so I told her, I said, you know, because your mom's so blunt, what I think really that she's trying to say in a more tactful mm-hmm. way is, you know, it's okay to move on with life. And, and um, so when I was finishing up, I did some energy healing with her and, and cutting cords and, you know, helping her with her mom. And, and when she was all done, when we we're all done with the session, she said, I feel the best that I've felt in the five years since my mom had passed. And then she left. And I, of course, I was like, you know, looking at spirit, like, what the heck was that all about? <laughs> but it's like they put me into the fire um, when I, there's something I think that I can't do. And so I'm really grateful for that experience sure. because I mean, who calls somebody an old poop? Where would that even come from? Exactly. You so know, specific. very specific. Yeah. I've never heard that term. <laughs> Uh, I think it comes from On Golden Pond with oh, uh, Henry Fonda. She yeah, would call yeah. him an old poop. That's Funny. where I think, but I mean, that's not a term anybody uses. No, no, no. You know, and I had to trust it and just say it, like, even though I didn't want to. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, that's definitely my mom. And I was like, okay. And he had the <laughs> so the personalities mm-hmm. continue to come through. Uh-huh. You know, they don't have the ego. And so people never come through now in my experience. So I can only speak to what I've experienced, but they, they, they get the bigger picture and they're not mad and they're not upset and you didn't do anything wrong. And I've never had anybody say, Oh, I died before I was supposed to. Like, I believe in a divinely guided orchestrated universe that things work out the way they're supposed to. And everything that has happened to me in communicating with spirit supports that idea. So that's something I think it's important for people to understand, too, is if they feel like, you know, they were gone before they were supposed to. In my understanding, your soul is the one who makes the decision that it's time to go. And if it's not time to go, you don't. And if it is, it can be something simple that creates your transition. But that's definitely something that um, people have a hard time understanding. You know, we're, we're veiled. We have amnesia. We don't get to see the bigger picture. But once you're released from that and you're back on the other side fully, you totally understand why things worked out the way I, they did. I heard a great quote that's something like, your lifetime is but a thread in the fabric of your soul. Mm-hmm. So we cannot see the big tapestry. We just see the thread that we're in. And certainly it can feel like the life was short or that doesn't make any sense. But, uh, you know, I, my prayer is that we all see the big picture someday and we get like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always imagine what it would be like to go back to the other side and be like, oh, okay, now I get it. Oh, this all makes sense. But sometimes, you know, when you're sitting here still in this human body, it's like, no, it's so this hard. doesn't it just doesn't make any This isn't right and this doesn't make no. sense. But if we can maybe take the idea that maybe things are orchestrated in a way that's for our best, highest growth, even though our ego doesn't like it, that um, you can have a little more peace and trust in the process. Well, and that brings up something, too, because what's often impossible to accept is the passing of a child. And I know you're passionate about helping bereaved parents. Um, can we yeah, can we talk a little bit about that and your Salter healing? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the 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 connection with the parents. So I have um, a, a beautiful grief group. Um, called Mediumship for the Grieving Hearts. And it's specifically just for parents, because what I've come to understand is the loss of a child is completely different than loss of anybody or anything else. It's its whole own category. And when I had 
in other groups, I would watch somebody compare the death of their, you know, husband, a long term husband to the child and the mother would get so upset or the father would get upset because it's it's just such a different kind of loss. And mm-hmm. so um, it's interesting. I want to explain how how did this come about? Because I'm not a bereaved parent. Um, I've been a healer for 17 years. I've been a medium for about eight years professionally, actually putting my neck out on the line. <laughs> and so uh, here in Phoenix, I would do some mediumship circles and bring in loved ones. And of course, you know, it brings in different people. It's to me, it's it's that tapestry and like, you know, their string intersects with yours and, and whatever. And so I had a, a bereaved mom tell me about, so I'm connected to the group Helping Parents Heal. And I, I got connected with them because one of the bereaved parents had come to one of my circles and she's like, you know, what you're doing and helping people, I think that you need to talk to this woman, Elizabeth Boisson. And Mm I was like, that's wonderful. You know, I'd love to meet her and and see how can I help? Because this is an area, um, child loss is, is an area that I don't know that there's enough spiritual support for it. Um, so What's interesting is so she has the Helping Parents Heal group. And the next day I had another bereaved mom who uh, I met because I also teach channeling. So, you know, spirit put us all together. Anyway, she told me about a man that was doing a mediumship certification. And she's like, Christine, you should go through and, and get certified. Well, of course, the ego is like, oh, God, <laughs> you know, I got to be tested and, and whatever. But I decided to go for it anyway. So it turns out within a two day span, I was introduced and told about Elizabeth Elizabeth Poisson and Mark Ireland, who are the co-creators of Helping Parents Heal. Yes. So one way or another, I was going to be <laughs> introduced to the group. And so spirit put me in the place of helping parents. It wasn't, it's not something that I was familiar with. And so that's another way that I know how divine it is because um, the, the synchronicities of putting the pieces together. So over time, um, I, I have been working off and on, I would go to the helping parents heal and I've done readings for the the parents and stuff like that. And I had the idea to put together a video series. And so I actually have a free video series. Anybody, anybody can watch it. But I was, um, I was given this idea by spirit and spirit never says, Christine, you must do something. So they give me the nudges, like, you know, this is what we'd like you to do, but I don't always follow through. (laughs) So I had this idea to put together and basically answering questions that almost everybody has when it comes to a medium. Um, what are they doing on the other side? Are they at peace? And all these, uh, I wanted to answer and give foundational understanding of those kind of questions that people have. And then I added in the intuition. So how does that look like and how does it work? So I ended up putting together this video series, but I was going to take a nap when spirit gave me the idea. And they literally said, no, you get up right now and you go sit down and you write this out. And within like an hour, I had the whole outline figured out. And they said, you need to put a group together for bereaved parents. And I was like, okay, you know, like kind of toe in the water, like uh, a little resistance, Uh uh, which I can do with spirit, especially when they're giving you a big assignment. So anyway, I I filmed all the videos. I have this beautiful group uh, going. We've been um, going for just, I think, about a year now. Um, And I've learned so much from the moms, but I get to share a lot of the healing understanding that I have. Um, with them. And so I'm really, I'm their cheerleader. So they come into a safe space so they can talk about their children. They can talk about their signs. They can ask questions of, of the afterlife or, you know, I had a dream or why am I not dreaming or do you think this is a sign? And, and they're so beautiful and really supporting each other that it's like this giant awakening. I believe a lot of times that when somebody loses their child or their child transitions. I don't even like to say child loss, but when their child finishes their life and transitions, what I've been noticing is it really seems to send somebody off on an awakened path because their child is gone and they want to figure out, are they okay? Right. Where are they at? And so it, it starts their awakening, yes, spiritual agree. journey. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have since, because the group has grown quite a bit, uh, and I had other people wanting to join. I have started also, it's called a mediumship for the bereaved soul. And that is for everybody 
uh, else. <laughs> so the parent group is like my a little cocooned parents. Um, and then, and I just opened it within the last month. So um, there's plenty of room for growth, but I have the videos available um, through my website. Um, so anybody can go through, it's an eight video series, starting with how do you plan your life? Um, how do you make your contract? What is life like on the other side? How to use your intuition, how to connect with Archangel Michael, because I think it's important. I know it's important because spirit told me um, to have somebody overseeing your spirit communication and then automatic writing um, to channel and bring through messages. So whether you've lost your your child or a father or whoever, the process is all the same. The videos are tailored towards the mom, so it's or towards the parent, so it says child, but you can just change that word in your head to loved one or dad or whatever. Uh -huh. um, the information is, is universal. And so everybody can do it. And I always say it's just a shift in perception. And you really have to raise your awareness to recognize that they're with you. Um, but I talk about ego and doubt and, and how to recognize guidance and, and stuff like that in the videos. So I'm so proud of you for doing it. I mean, these are huge questions that you're answering and addressing. So your website is christinesalter.com, right? Yes. And yes. they're free videos, you said? Yeah, it's a free video series. It's, they are under the uh, Bereaved Parent Support um, and it'll take you to the page where the videos are. And yeah, it's free. Anybody, anybody can, and anybody can watch them. And I would love for, you know, everybody to get the information. You don't, you don't have to be bereaved, even if you're just wanting to study mediumship or understand the other side a little bit better. Uh, it's, there's a lot of information. And what I love is that when people go through it, it helps shift their paradigm to a little bit more open, yes. openness to the other side. And it's just, my whole passion, everything that I, you know, if I could do all day long, every day is to show people you're already getting messages, spirits are already connecting with you, you're highly intuitive, and let's just shift you just a tiny bit so you can really see this bigger picture. Oh, that is so great. And how about your, fa your are your groups Facebook groups? They are Facebook groups. Yep. Mediumship for the Grieving Heart is for parents and the mediumship for the bereaved soul is for anybody else who wants to learn how to connect with their loved ones on the other side. Can anybody join that? Is it a paid anybody. thing? Anybody. Nope. Free? That one is completely free. God mm -hmm. love you for being such a giver. <laughs> I do personal mentoring. So if someone's like, I want the shortcut and uh, how do I yeah. open now? Then I certainly, um, you know, work with Archangel Michael through about a four day or four, four uh, sessions. Um, you know, get them bringing through messages. They practice with me uh, and bring through my loved ones so I can help them shift and adjust. Isn't and that great? And I'm a firm believer when we give enough away, people will trust us. And when the time comes to book an appointment with a medium or find a spiritual mentor or something, it'd be like, hey, I heard this gal named Christine. Let me just poke around her website. <laughs> you know, it's not from the other way around. You know, yours for only $500. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 no. And no, I do believe I, we have to make an income in order to live, you know, so I, I get it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is my full time mm -hmm. work. This is, you know, this is what I do. I live, eat, breathe a spiritual led life. And, and I'm led to help other people do the same thing. So absolutely, it's a business. Mm -hmm. um, but all the stuff on Facebook, I do have a paid parent support group. And what I do in that one that's different is um, I do a weekly live Facebook chat with them. Nice. And so I take them through. It's it's $20 a month. So it's not, I, I don't consider that expensive. Um, but I walk them through whether it's, it's meditations, guided meditations, healing, learning to connect with their kids, answering questions. So every week we're getting together and um, I'm walking them through something that helps bring more peace uh, lifts the weight off of them, helps them feel more grounded. Um, they can sense their kids. They're opening the telepathy so they can just have that conversation with them and, you know, cut out the medium, <laughs> right. which, which, uh, I would love. I mean, that's where I want to get people to, to know that, to understand because they talk to us all the time, but we think that it's us or we think that the voice should sound like their voice, but generally it sounds like our, our voice, voice. But there's a, yes. a knowing a right. knowingness that comes with it. And so uh, it's just, it's a shift in perception. Spirit's always talking to you, always. Can you give us some of the things you might teach people as to how we can know our loved one is with us? Sure. So 
course, people talk about signs. And I think that signs from loved ones are really important because they're a, it's a visual. Uh, so let me think for a second. Mm -hmm. So most of us are feelers. And the reason that most of us, our main intuitive gift is being feelers is because it's hard to push away a feeling. Like if your stomach tightens up, it's hard to push that away. Or if you get butterflies, it's hard to push that away. And so most people are going to be looking for things so they, they work with you with your gifts. You're seeing, you're feeling, you're hearing, and you're knowing. And a lot of people are really looking for the sky writing, you know, like that sign. Yes, that's we are. The, the bolt yeah, of just... lightning that's <laughs> yeah. so big exactly. that it's got to be, yes, right. I know that about that. Past that. Yeah, that gets past that doubt. And the thing with the way that they communicate with us is it's subtle. And so you have to raise your awareness and you have to start looking for it, because if you want them to, you know, uh, land 15 butterflies on your head, and then maybe you might believe them that that's not how it's going to work. So it's your job to really raise your awareness. And so there's the typical signs that they'll send you. And so whether it's a butterfly or hummingbird or numbers on a license plate or a big heart in the in the sky, those are things that people look for. Um, they can also send you a smell. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there and your dad had a certain cologne and out of the blue you smell it or they were a smoker and you're like, who the heck is smoking? That's so weird. I always tell people, if you get something and your loved one who's passed pops in your head at the same time, that is them right there trying to get your attention. But we are looking for that much bigger sign. So we right. doubt it away as that coincidence. I don't believe coincidence. Uh, I don't even like the word because as far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as a coincidence. That's an ego word that keeps us blinded to this beautiful connection to, to loved ones and angels and, and source trying to break through your mental barriers. And so um, you can feel them touch you. So you can ask them to come in and touch you. That's something that I work with a lot with the moms is to let them feel their kids. Um, one of the one of the tools. So I'll give you one of my tools. OK, when it comes to intuition. Um, and once you understand that, you know, you can get a picture in your head or a thought will just pop in out of nowhere, like you're washing the dishes and you hear somebody say hi, your brain didn't go there. Or all of a sudden you're thinking about dad. It's because dad's right there. Your brain didn't just go, gosh, I wonder what my dad's doing right now. He's like, hello, I'm right here. So when it comes to intuition, if you're wanting to have more of an experience with your loved ones here on the earth plane, because they're going to work with you with what you understand, I um, like to talk about having a and everything works in your imagination. So that's where all of this stuff is going to be coming from. So to improve your feeling, seeing, hearing, or knowing, in your imagination, imagine a sound a mixing board like in a recording studio. And you have one panel for seeing, one for hearing, one for feeling, and one for knowing. So if you think your loved one's around and you ask them to come be near you and you want to feel them, you can imagine, okay, I'm going to turn up my ability to feel on one of these little knobs or dials. And even if you just have the intention, like, okay, maybe I can't see it because I'm not there yet, but I can imagine, you know, turning this up. So you have at your disposal a tool to work with your own intuition so you can learn to dial in the frequency, basically, of your loved one. So, and it, it also goes for the people who are overfeelers or empathic and they feel every everything from everybody and it's overwhelming you can imagine turning just turn it down you know they could be dialed in at a 12 and they should be at a two so that's something that I teach people who are empathic that feel too much um, how to you have control over your intuition people are afraid when they connect with their loved ones or spirit that they'll lose control over what's going on and they'll be inundated or maybe they bring in energies they don't want to and so this is my way of teaching people how to control what comes into them. So me as a medium, I have business hours with spirit. Say that so again. I can, me as a medium, yeah. I have business hours with spirit. Oh, business hours. Okay. Yes. So what that means is I can go out and about in life and I don't pick up anything from anybody because I only open up when it's when specifically it's time. So if I have a client or if I'm working with a group or something, um, so nobody, you know, like comes and bugs me trying to get me to pass messages along because there must be a sign in my aura somewhere that's like, 
no. <laughs> She's closed right now. She's closed. Yeah. <laughs> Not accepting visitors. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I can't imagine. So I'm still human and I still have to walk this path. And I can't walk into a room and feel 11 different people and try and help them all connect. You know, I have other things that I have to do. And so um, I think that that's why people don't see spirit a lot because they would almost either they're going to be afraid or they're going to get sidetracked and, and, you know, playing with the spirit world instead of doing what it is that they need to do here. So this is such um, good information, Christine, not to interrupt you, but uh, the power of our intention is so huge. And a lot of times we don't think it's real like okay yeah i'm just gonna imagine a dial turning it up our intuition but <laughs> henry ford i think is the one who said if you think you can or you think you can't you're right mm -hmm. so if you give yourself permission to play with this and to imagine turning up the dial or whatever they are mm -hmm. for seeing or hearing or smelling or whatever and then you spend some time in the present moment and believe it Gosh, stuff starts happening and all it takes yeah. is to try it. Absolutely. And our ego Absolutely. might say, this is crazy, you know, but that's what our ego is going to say because that's what right. it says. But right. stuff happens and miracles and these synchronicities can be so subtle. They Absolutely. You know, as a medium, when I'm connecting with somebody, I have to really be focused because it comes in and out of my head. It's like, <laughs> like, a thought comes in and comes out. It's not like they're sitting there beating me on the head, like, hey, get this next piece. And so it's holding space and the intention of yes. I'm going to understand what's coming to me so I can be an effective communicator. If I miss something, they'll bring it. If it's if, if I miss something that's very important, they'll bring it back through, bring it back through until I'm like, oh, you know, they, that's the third time they showed me the airplane because you're, you're holding space here, you're holding space with spirit, and you're holding space with the person that you're, you're bringing messages through for. So it really takes a lot of concentration. So, but when it comes to connecting with your own loved ones, if you're in your head, you're already out of the game. So if you're like, okay, I want you to come in and I'm gonna get this message from you and you're efforting and you're trying, you've already blocked them out. So if you wanna connect with them, it's, you need to go within. You need to quiet. You need to uh, allow your mind to get settled. You can do a walking meditation, and that's simply, again, int everything's intention. Um, go for a walk and say, okay, I'm going to invite you to come along with me. Um, I'm going to assume that you're coming. They can hear you. They hear everything. They know everything that's going on with you. Mm -hmm. You don't you know, you don't have to say I love you out loud. They know it. They already hear it. Um, so you can go for a walk and say, okay, dad, I would like to have a conversation with you. And, and I know my ego is going to say, I'm making it up or this is crazy. And we're just going to put that aside. Just like shh, ego, I don't need your help right now. And go for a walk, focus on breathing, let your mind empty, and then things will start popping into your head. Now, the problem that we get into is we think that's us. Yes, we do. But it's not. And it's them talking to you. It's not mm -hmm. probably going to sound like their voice. And it's just telepathic communication. It just pops in your head. You're like, gosh, I wonder where that came from. Well, you just invited dad to go for a walk with you. And he waited until you got out of your own head and you got back into your body. And then that's when they're able to start talking to you and bring you those messages. You know, if you're sitting there and having birds flying five feet from your face, chances are really high that somebody is bringing that to you to get your attention. And if right. grandma pops in your head, you're like, take it as a sign. Grandma's trying to connect with you. Grandma's probably standing right next to you. Like, come on, can't you? <laughs> Is this not enough for me to get through to you? Because, you know, we want those big signs, but they're just, they're subtle. So I'm going to take this as a sign because you okay. said airplane and you said dad huh? and my dad flew airplanes. He was an airline oh. pilot. So I'm, it's subtle. I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly how it works. A hundred percent. You know, with the moms, I, I just, and it's not all moms, but it's mainly moms that are on the search to connect with their kids. And they, I, nothing makes me happier when they finally get that sign and they go, oh my God, I got a message and they're right. okay and they're not upset with me and it lights the it lights the pilot light again that was blown out when their child left. Yes. And they start to have this little tiny bit of hope. I had this dream a long time ago, like 10, 15 years ago, and I was 
in class with God. So whatever God is, right? But God in this dream uh, came across as a male figure. Okay, great. I just needed it to come to me that way. It doesn't mean that's how it is. Anyway, I was in class with God and God was teaching and walking around the class. And, and from his hands, he had this beautiful, beautiful blue light. And he walked past me and I looked up and I saw this light. And so I reached up and I grabbed his hand and God didn't do anything. Just let me look at the hand. And I looked at the light and it still makes me emotional. Almost 15 years later, I looked at the light and I recognized that light is home. That's where we come from. We are love. We are light. And I started to cry in my dream, like, oh my God, that light, there, there's home. I've forgotten it. I'm on planet Earth and I've got this veil and I just totally forget where I come from. And that light is hope. That's what I recognized. And so when I woke up, I was just bawling because like, oh, God, I'm back on planet Earth. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've got things that I have to do. But what it taught me and what spirit continues to teach me is that if you can light a flame of hope in somebody, Mm -hmm. it will keep them moving forward. It's the one thing that they can hang on to because a lot of people like, is this real? Do we die? There's nothing left. Like what is really there? But if we can, you know, light that little pilot light of hope and we can feed it and it can grow, they then start to share that there's this ripple effect with other people and and other people start to have hope and they start to get engaged with their lives again. And these moms are amazing. They teach me every single day about being a human, about love, about their experience experiences and man when their lights come back on nothing makes me happier oh it's so great and being part of a group whether it's your group one of your groups um, being part of helping parents heal.org and being on their online group um, even listening to my show or Mm -hmm. to be uh, we've got a little shout out to my listeners we've got a um, facebook group we don't die listeners you can type into facebook to just take a few minutes, no matter where you're at, and re-engage, be involved with people, it can really, like you say, the pilot light, keep it burning, but it can help. Because left to our own devices, when our brain is off of this and our ego kicks in, I mean, it doesn't take long for that pilot light to go out. (laughs) And we've forgotten. But the truth is, our loved ones still walk by our side. They can hear us. We don't have to wait till someday we can reach a medium to talk to them. And so I so love all that you do to give. Um, But I want to ask you too, can people contact you individually for a reading if that's something they choose? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, all that's on my website. So okay. I do medium readings, but I also do angel readings. And so um, helping people understand their purpose or their path, that's or they got to make a big decision. And so yeah, as a channel, as a channel, it's like, who are you talking to as a medium? You know, you're talking to loved ones as a channel or a spirit messenger, you know, you're talking to angels, but it's all, it's just what energy you're connected into. So when people um, that are listening and they're working on opening their intuition, it's, it'll all be open to them. They don't have to just talk to just loved ones or just to angels. So, mm. And also, I know that you're going to be one of the guest speakers at the Helping Parents Heal first annual conference coming up April 13th through 15th, which I, I know is am, sold out, but yes, there's, still, am, there's a waiting list. People, I'm so, yeah. so honored. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth asked me if I would mm-hmm. present. And so I'm teaching a class. Uh, I'm presenting um, tools, d- divination tools to connect with your children and spirit because the conference is for bereaved parents. And we're going to be working with a pendulum and oracle cards to learn how to, you know, get that door open so they can, they want, they need that communication. And so that's what I get to facilitate for them. Um, and so it's, it's so exciting. Like this is, this is my thing. I love to talk. I love to teach. I love to share and, you know, turn those lights on. So I'm also speaking, um, next Sunday at the Helping Parents Heal Tucson. So I'm driving from Phoenix, um, going down to Tucson and working with the, the parents down there. So oh, it's, super. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's such interesting work and it's, probably of everything that I've done so far, the most impactful Mm -hmm. in making a difference in people's lives. And, um, you know, people who are listening, if they think, gosh, I wonder, I wonder if I'm able to do that. Well, let me tell you from a non-ego standpoint, (laughs) we can all do it. We all have this gift. We all, um, are able to connect with spirit because we've never been disconnected. And it's just, uh, understanding how it works, shifting our perception a little bit, 
And I promise you, spirit will deliver things that you couldn't even come up with on your own. Um, and I like to, so a while back I was interviewed for a TV show and it was about skeptics mm -hmm. and he's like, okay, well, you know, what would you say to a skeptic? And I was like, I don't know what I would say. I've never had that question. And so my go-to is always, okay, Archangel Michael, what would we say? And so not that, you know, there's a bunch of skeptics listening because they're, they're looking for that information, but he's told me to tell him, ask to send you a sign that you can't possibly miss, but don't be so skeptical that you miss it. So keep an open mind, ask for things that come out of the blue. So the way that spirit works is they'll send you things that come out of the blue and it's a repetitive thing. So if you're like, you know, what career should I do? Or I want some kind of change. You can send that out to the universe and ne necessarily your loved ones, but your guides and angels, the loved ones will also uh, help with it. And then they'll start bringing you things that are repetitive. And then that's how you know that it's the right answer coming your way. So be on the lookout for the repetitive things, be on the lookout for um, things that move you in the direction that you want to go. Um, those are just a couple of ways that the universe spirit, God, whatever it is that you want to call it, um, talks to you. Oh, Christine, thank you so much. Our hour is just about complete. I don't know how it goes by so fast <laughs> all the time. But can we ask maybe Archangel Michael, who just happens oh. to be on your right shoulder, is there any closing words <laughs> or things that, and just for all of us in a whole, we could use today that um, might make a difference? Yeah, or so anything? let me just, absolutely. So let me just tap into him real quick here and see, we'll just see what Archangel Michael wants to say. So um, the first thing that comes to me is in this quest to connect with spirit, you have to remain aware of the magic. And the magic is those little synchronicity things that come your way. So as soon as you close the door to magic, it makes it more difficult for them to get their messages across to you. So first it's set the intention like, okay, like you had said, or I think you said earlier, set the intention that, um, I'm going to let you come to me and um, I'm just really going to be aware. Um, kind of make the appointment basically with spirit or your loved one or whatever. And really just, he wants you to keep an open mind. Uh, I always tell people to keep a journal. So if you're not sure, um, keep a journal of things that you think might be happening and um you can go back over time. It helps get rid of the, e not get rid of the ego, silence the ego. So you can go back over time and say like, oh, wow, look at that. I've had a red cardinal every Tuesday for the last four months. And gosh, I've been wondering, you know, is that my mother or, or whatever. Right. Um, and so if you want to see the magic, you have to make the decision to see the magic. And then it will show up in ways that will just blow your mind. Um, read, study. Be aware of the ego and the ego traps because that's really the only thing that's going to keep you from having the kind of connection that you're looking for. So that's what brings in the doubt and and um, distracts you, those kind of things. So as soon as you learn to understand how ego talks, you'll really be able to understand how spirit talks. Too, mm -hmm. And, and we all anybody. have ego. We all have it. I've We're talked to, to hundreds and hundreds of people and it still shows up like, am I crazy or am I really doing what I'm doing? <laughs> oh, well, Christine, well, go ahead. And then we'll oh, I said that's the, that's the magic of the groups. Is it that is. When you can talk with other people and you real, you start to realize, oh my God, I'm not crazy. Because that's yeah. what most people think, that, that they're nuts and, and they're making it up. And as soon as you think I'm nuts and I'm making it up, know right then and there that you're not and that you're actually getting it. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I just, uh, I love what you're doing and I appreciate how much light you're sending out into the universe and, and bringing people forward and really, you know, you're, you're the, the furnace on all oh, those little pipe lights you. out there. <laughs> and I just love to share and I, you know, don't get me wrong. I get really inspired by these conversations too. And it helps my light to say, stay, stay burning it really does so uh, mm -hmm. I can't be having a bad day and then call you and then be left in a bad day no way Jose <laughs> <laughs> but as a reminder your website is christinesalter.com mm -hmm. and find you on Facebook um, both of your groups mediumship for grieving hearts and mediumship for the bereaved soul 
Yeah, the grieving hearts is the moms and the brave soul is everybody else. So I I hope that a bunch of people find it. And I mentor, basically, people can ask questions. And then I'm a cheerleader there, too. Yeah. And if anybody's interested in helping parents heal or the conference, get on the waiting list. You go to helpingparentsheal.org. And a few little things from me, uh, as always, all these past episodes are available at any time, 24 hours a day at we don't die radio.com. And when you go there for the first time, up will pop a screen that says join our insiders club and not to worry. I'd send you very few emails, but you get a free um, copy of my book. We don't die in PDF form. It says just the first few chapters, but I'm a giver it's the whole book. And then a <laughs> great audio called how to survive grief and my 19 reasons for believing in the afterlife and a little bit more about the afterlife. Afterlife, um, and maybe I'll meet you here. There's going to be an afterlife symposium September 14th through 16th in Scottsdale, Arizona. So maybe we can connect you with those people, Christine, because that'd be great to have you there Ooh. as well. I would love, yeah, I would love that. Thank you. Yeah, and last year it sold out, um, but we have a bigger space this year, and I think it'll sell out again. But if you're interested, just go to afterlifesymposium.org to find out more. And so, in closing, my name's Sandra Champlain, and as always, I'm delighted that I get to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that life after death is real. I believe that life is an education for our souls and that your life here on earth is important. So like Christine says, anybody can connect anytime. Our loved ones are around us, but be open to magic. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So I really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. (music) 